Have you ever dreamt of having an Airbus A320 cockpit in one of your rooms in your house? But you look at them online and you cannot afford it. Well, same here. So, in this video, that's why I've made this, is to show you that you do not need to spend too much money to have a nice realistic experience that gives you more immersion for less money. So, welcome back to the channel and let's get into it. Okay, so now, here's the cockpit. And as of right now, it may just look like a bunch of cardboard boxes and some flight control stuck on top of them. Well, trust me, it doesn't feel like that once you sat down. And once you experience this, you, you never want to go back to the old immersion again of just having a joystick on your desk. So, let's have a breakdown of how I made this. Firstly, a start the frame. I have made this with the intent to be dismantled and put up rather easily, so that's why it's made from cardboard. But don't get me wrong, it may look like may not look like it's the best, but still highly immersive. I've built this to fit into my surroundings in my room, which is on and under my desk, which I have a rather high desk and it's quite wide, which is why cardboard side panels hide most of the big gaps that you can see under the desk. This really makes it feel more immersive as it feels more enclosing and like a cockpit. As I was making this with not much money, most of the peripherals are on top of the cardboard boxes, but I made sure to look at the dimensions of the actual A320 to use the boxes which provide the most accurate dimensions to try to make it as close to a one-to-one -one scale as possible. It's a bit out as of like a few five centimeters or so, but if I had to make this out of wood, maybe MDF, I'd be able to get the precise dimensions and make it a one-to-one -one scale, but for now, this will do. And now, for the side stick. I used the Thrustmaster TCA Airbus Edition side stick. I have used this product now for a few years and I absolutely love it. It's got so many buttons which you can map as well as replicating the Airbus feel and it, it needs ample force to move it. Also, there are sides, other side sticks I'm yet to try yet for about the same price, mainly being the Winwing Ursa Minor airline side stick. From what I understand, people like this one more, as apparently there is like um, a vibration, you can feel the vibrations from the aircraft, which I can imagine increases the immersion. My side stick just sits on a box, so there's not much setup required there, and because it's the Thrustmaster, it's plug and play, and the cable is mostly out of sight. I've run it behind the monitor, which has the navigation and PFD, so I don't see it that much. Now for the throttle. I can recommend the Thrustmaster TCA Airbus throttle, as I got the captain's pack, which came with the throttle and the throttle extensions. This includes the landing gear, auto brake, parking brake, and rudder trim, as well as the speed brake and flaps. But this helps increase the immersion as there's more switches to use, making it more hands on. Though a downside of the product is it does not have the pull feature on the flap or speed brake lever, so I cannot arm the speed brake by pulling it out like I would in the actual A320. To get around this, I mapped that to a feature in the simulator to a button on the throttle which works well for now. For this one though, it sits in a box to make the most realistic, like the actual A320. To do this, I found a relatively large block box and drew around the throttle. Then cut out the shape, and then inside the box it was obviously empty. So I put another side box sideways into it to give the throttle something to sit on, and then I realised it was too low. So what I did was I looked up the actual height of the A320 pedestal, and I found a box to make it roughly that high, just out by a few centimetres. And that just rests on that box. And now, I bet you're wondering, how do I cover the throttle if it's in the box? I do this by putting the cable through the box, but the side is still taped. I did this making a hole with scissors. I just pull the power cord right through the throttle in the box, which it snugly fits in. Now for the rudder pedals. 
These can increase the immersion and realism significantly, but some of the higher end pedals are so expensive. And so I had to find one that aren't too expensive, and what I found was the Thrustmaster T-Flight rudder pedals. These get the job done very well for the price of them, and I would recommend them if you're just starting out flight simulation. Not only can you use them with a wide range of aircraft such as Airbus, Boeings, Cessnas, even helicopters, so that means they're also highly adaptable. The rudder pedals, how I have them is I just sit them on the floor, but the downside to this is sometimes they can just slide around if I push too hardly on them. Now, one of the more exciting additions of the cockpit I have made is the primary flight display and navigation displays. For these, I used a very old 24 inch Samsung monitor, I'm not sure what the model is, as I no longer have the box for the monitor. But what I did do was find some dimensions of the primary flight display and navigation display of the actual A320 aircraft. And what I did is I got a bit of cardboard that managed to fit across the whole monitor and cut them out with a sharp blade. Using the sharp blade it allowed me to be as accurate as possible, but also uh, these ones that I've got currently need a bit of work as they're about half an inch or three centimetres out, roughly around there. And how I get the displays onto the monitor is I press the right alt key on my keyboard and then I click on the display in the flight simulator. And what that does is that pops up the display into a little window and then from there I drag it down to look at the second monitor and then scale the window to fit inside the cardboard I have cut out. This gives a fairly realistic feel as I need to look down at the displays in order to see the information such as the airspeed, the altitude and where I'm headed. Typically if I didn't have these I'd have to change the camera angle in the simulator to do so which kind of ruins all the immersion you're trying to build. Uh, so these displays are an absolute game changer and yet again this is another way of me not having to move my mouse which obviously kills most of the immersion and realism you're trying to have. And now for possibly one of my most favourite things about the cockpit is my autopilot panel. For this I have the Wing Wing FCU in EFIS. This has completely changed the way I fly the Airbus aircraft as it has the full push and pull features of an aircraft which is totally different and also the whole thing is completely backlit so it makes flying at night when I have my blind shut and it's dark outside so much better so you can actually see everything in front of you and you do not need to have a light on in your room. So. How this is mounted into the cockpit is I just have this on top of the box as it came with. Behind the monitors, which contains the primary flight display and navigation display. So it slightly sticks out over the displays, which gives it a more realistic feel as I only have limited space. And this is like the best I can do at the current moment in time. But I have implemented it in, well into the cockpit and it's working, but I might need to add a bit more structure behind it as it can slide when I push or pull the buttons or knobs. And the final way you can get more realism is to either buy or find in your house just an old keyboard and just map the buttons in the simulator. So for instance, what I've done is I've mapped all the lights on the Phoenix A320 into the keyboard. So I just have to push the key and then the light just turns on in the simulator. This can just be easily done in your settings and can drastically increase the realism as you no longer need to look around the cockpit and use your mouse every time you need to turn your lights on. So this can be especially helpful if you're flying on the VATSIM network where you need, where you're in a high, higher pressure environment and you need to just turn your lights on when you enter the runway, for instance. Um, and if you wanted, you could get a piece of wood or something and you could mount it above you so it'd be more like an overhead panel. Or and also, on, you can, on the switches of your keyboard, you can get bits of paper and you can draw little lights onto them or you can put little notes to remind you of what they'd actually do if you can't remember them. And just stick it onto the keys on the keyboard and that has helped me so much. I hope it helps you as well. And now, just the software I've used. I'm using, currently running Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 as I found it a bit more reliable than Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. 
I can also find more add-ons and more mods for the current at the current moment, but it might change as the whole Flight Simulator 2024 is just updating. Um, so I'll try to keep you informed when I, if I switch over to Microsoft 2024 permanently. And now, the aircraft I use. I use the very good Phoenix A320. This was the first purchase I had made in the Flight Simulator, as I understood from what it was, it was going to be one of the best aircraft out there. And it is, honestly, one of the most realistic feeling aircraft, just the physics, the systems, how it's all worked, and Phoenix have crafted it perfectly, and it looks incredibly good in the simulator, especially when you have those 8K liveries on there. Obviously, all the textures in the cockpit are so good, and they're all crisp and clear on the displays I've got. But what's even better is it really does not kill the precious FPS in the simulator. And you can, if it does for you, what you'd have to do is you'd fiddle around with your settings, maybe make outside look a bit worse, or some of the instruments and things in your cockpit make a bit worse. But if, if you want, I can make a whole video covering settings for it if you really want. I'll try to find the best ones out there for you guys. Anyway, I would highly recommend the aircraft. I've used it, I'd say, about two years now and it just hasn't disappointed me and also it allows you to make even the simulator more realistic as you can use their um, EFB which is like the iPad in the simulator which also has the MCDU on so you can have that on a remote display like a tablet which is what I've got and that saves you entering all your flight plans with the mouse obviously increasing your realism and obviously as well out there there are some good aircraft that have the same features such as the fly-by-wire A32NX and the A380 as well. Also the Headwind Simulations A330neo. In my eyes they are all solid free aircraft which may not look as good as the Phoenix but they certainly get the job done and they do it well. And so that concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed and learnt something new. If you feel I could do anything better, please let me know in the comments, and if you'd stayed until the end, please consider liking and subscribing to help me make more content like this in the future. Many thanks, and have a great day.